In this video, guys, we're going to be looking at the price of finasteride, but we're also going to be looking at a whole host of other things about finasteride. We're going to be looking at how it works. We're going to be looking at whether or not it's a good option for you. We're going to be looking at the side effects, and we're also going to give you some natural solutions to finasteride, so make sure to stay tuned. Hey guys, Leon here from HairGuard.com, where people who are worried about their hair loss go to regrow their hair. If you are new to the channel and you want updating on any of the latest hair loss news that we find out about, then do make sure to hit subscribe. Just before we get into the video on finasteride, if you're worried about your hair loss and you are looking at this video because you're thinking of taking finasteride to help you regrow hair, then what you should do instead is click the link in the, in the description to take the hair guard hair loss quiz. You'll answer a few short questions about yourself and your hair loss, then you'll actually receive free expert advice on how to regrow healthy hair. But for now, let's get into the video on finasteride. Finasteride is one of the most popular hair loss treatments on the market. However, you may be surprised to learn that it isn't necessarily the most effective. In this video, I'm going to introduce you to finasteride and how it works. You'll also learn the most common side effects and complications, how Propecia differs from generic finasteride, how Propecia differs from Proscar, and which is best for fighting hair loss, whether topical finasteride is a viable option, the price as well as possible discounts, uh, how to get a prescription for finasteride and the natural alternative so it's going to be a very in-depth video stay tuned now known under the brand name Propecia finasteride is a drug used to cover the symptoms of male pattern baldness it was first developed by Merck for the treatment of prostate enlargement over time it was discovered that one side effect of finasteride was hair growth in 1997 it was finally released for the treatment of androgenetic alopecia so how exactly does it work? Well, unlike Rogaine, another common hair loss drug found on the market, finasteride works from the inside out. In short, it interrupts the process that converts testosterone to DHT. It does this by inhibiting or slowing down the enzyme 5 alpha reductase, which is responsible for the conversion process. When taken orally, finasteride targets the enzyme before the development of DHT occurs. This is in contrast to Rogaine, which just makes it possible for hair follicles to survive in the presence of DHT. If DHT is responsible for male pattern baldness, why does the body produce it? Well, DHT actually plays a crucial role in the body, specifically as it relates to male genital maturation and development of the prostate. Considering the role it plays, blocking development of DHT can have serious side effects and complications for the user. The majority of side effects are related to sexual function, for example, loss of libido, difficulty achieving and maintaining an erection, decreased ejaculatory volume, depression, anxiety and fatigue. While side effects can subside once finasteride use stops, some individuals may experience long-lasting symptoms. So what's the difference between Propecia and generic finasteride? One of the most common ways to save money on Propecia is by purchasing generic finasteride. The costs can be significantly lower and the effects are exactly the same. So what exactly is the difference? Well, in short, there really isn't one. The active ingredient, finasteride, is present in Propecia as well as generic brands, though the inactive ingredients can differ from brand to brand. For most people, this causes no problems. However, certain individuals may react differently to different finasteride brands. There may be a few reasons for this. One, the more affordable brands may use lower quality products. Two, you may have an allergy to one of the inactive ingredients. So what's the difference between Propecia and Proscar? When discussing treatment methods, it's common for hair loss sufferers to consider higher doses. After all, a higher dose will mean faster and better results, right? Well, not necessarily, and in fact, it can mean increased side effects and price. As mentioned, Propecia is the original brand of finasteride that's used to treat male pattern baldness. Proscar is also a finasteride containing drug, but one that is used in the treatment of benign prostatic hyperlasia or BPH. The other difference between the two drugs is their finasteride dose. Propecia is just 1mg, while Proscar is 5mg. So should you go straight to using Proscar if you'd like to speed up the process? Well, no. The main reason being is that there is no proof that a higher dose of finasteride will lead to faster or better results. In the majority of studies conducted on finasteride use for hair loss, the patients who say positive results did show with just the 1mg dose. There's no need to increase to 5mg to see results. Of course, a higher dose can also mean increased risk of side effects. With more finasteride in your body, the more 5 AR is inhibited. This means even less DHT is being naturally produced within the body, which can have many sexual and hormonal consequences. 
What about topical finasteride? Is that another option? While oral finasteride has been the only option for decades, a new formula has entered the market, topical finasteride. The main difference is that oral finasteride works from the inside out, while topical finasteride inhibits 5AR only in the problem area, the hair follicle. If oral finasteride has proven to be effective, why was a topical formula developed? Well, for many hair loss sufferers, the body-wide side effect associated with the oral treatment may deter them from treatment. The hope with the development of topical finasteride was less side effects with similar hair growth results. The main study done comparing oral and topical finasteride was performed in 2009 by Indian researchers. The study consisted of 45 young men with AGA, seven of which were later excluded. These men were split into four groups and they were given one of four treatments. One milligram oral of finasteride, oral placebo, topical dose of finasteride or a topical placebo. In both the active pill and active gel groups, an increase in mean hair count and number of terminal hairs was seen. Both of the active treatment groups also saw a decrease in the size of an alopecia patch. So, is topical finasteride a viable option? Well, at this time, more research is necessary. And while a few companies are selling it in its topical formula, it's not available in the majority of the world, including in the United States. So, as promised, let's have a look at the price. Well, a common factor when pursuing treatment for hair loss and balding is cost. How much will treatment cost you on a monthly basis, and is it affordable in the long term? Well, let's look at the cost of 30-day supply of pills from the most popular pharmacies in the United States. We've got $44 at Walmart, $80 at Walgreens, $83 at Target, $80 at Rite Aid, $70 at CVS, $13 at Costco, and $37 at Sam's Club. Prices do vary by state by state, and also as well as pharmacy by pharmacy. Now, as you can see, finasteride prices vary greatly, and you should do your research prior to picking one. Now, in many cases, your insurance company may not cover Propecia or a generic brand. However, you may be able to get a discount from the manufacturer, Merck. Depending on the pharmacy you use, you may also be able to get a discount by ordering a 90-day supply as opposed to the usual 30-day supply. However, it would be best to try the 30-day supply first to ensure you don't suffer from any adverse effects. With the ability of generic brands, finasteride can be purchased from just about any pharmacy. However, a prescription is necessary. So, how do you obtain a finasteride prescription? While your primary care physician may be able to write you a prescription, it's always a good idea to get a second opinion from a hair loss specialist. There are different types of hair loss specialists, though the most common is a dermatologist. By seeing a dermatologist who specializes in hair loss, you can get a better understanding of the cause of your balding. The doctor will perform an examination, which may involve a physical exam, a blood test and scalp biopsy. Using the results, your doctor may decide that finasteride is a good option for you, or they may recommend a different method. Well, is finasteride right for you? Finasteride is one of the most popular hair loss drugs on the market, however there are many things to consider before deciding it's the right treatment for you. For example, do you want to treat your hair loss or temporarily cover the issue? Are you aware of and prepared for common side effects, including sexual dysfunction? Do you understand that finasteride is a treatment that you'll need to take for a lifetime and that stopping treatment will result in a recurrence of hair loss? Well, the answers to the above questions will give you a solid place to start, though only you and your doctor can decide whether finasteride is right for you and your situation. So now we're going to look at some natural alternatives to finasteride. One of the best ways to avoid the side effects of finasteride, as well as the cost, is to use natural alternatives. These can be just as effective and have less side effects. Now first we'll look at 5-alpha reductase inhibitors. If you're looking for a direct alternative to finasteride, a 5-AR is your best bet. After all, inhibiting 5-AR is finasteride's main mechanism. As with finasteride, natural 5-AR inhibitors can be used to interrupt the DHT development process. This means less DHT is interacting with your follicles and theoretically, less hair loss. A few of the most potent 5-AR inhibitors include reishi mushrooms, saw palmetto and green tea. While adding the above ingredients to your diet may be beneficial, the best way to inhibit 5-AR is through diet alkalization. In short, the foods we eat leave an ash in our bloodstreams. This ash can be either acidic or alkaline depending on the foods. It just so happens that humans function best when our blood is net alkaline, and 5-AR best functions when in an acidic environment. This means for the sake of your health and as a way to inhibit 5-AR, it's best to eat foods that fall on the alkaline side of the pH scale. Now, another thing to do is to use topical DHT inhibitors. The most effective topical treatment will be the one that you can use consistently. This is why the most effective DHT blocker will vary from individual to individual. 
No matter which treatment you use, it's important to prepare your scalp beforehand, and this ensures the topical treatment penetrates the scalp plate deeply. Now, the Hairguard team have created the Hairguard Scalp Elixir. Now, this is filled with high quality ingredients that can be very difficult to source, and also it treats the seven underlying causes of hair loss. Now, this is an excellent topical DHT blocker. I'm gonna link you to this in the description so you can have a look at the product and you can also purchase it there if you decide to. So, Hegar Scalp Elixir, I'll link that to you down below. And also, we've got microneedling. If you'd like to up your efforts, we recommend microneedling. It's a method where you use tiny needles to puncture the scalp and essentially wound it. And when healed, these wounds help to regenerate healthy skin and hair follicles. They also increase blood flow. So guys, I've already made a very in-depth video on how to use a derma roller, which is a way that you can do microneedling. So what I'll do is I'll link you to the video in the description where we've done an in-depth guide, we've shown you the science and we show you exactly how to use one of these and how to take good care of it. So I will link that to you in the description. Now there are many products on the market that claim to stop hair loss and regrow your hair. Finasteride, also known as Papisha, is one of the more popular options. And while many users will experience positive results while using it, these results stop as soon as the product is discontinued. This is why we recommend a natural approach to hair regrowth. While prescriptions and over-the-counter products may provide temporary results, they don't actually solve the problem, instead they cover it up. So guys, that's what we're going to share today on Finasteride. Make sure to hit subscribe, check out the links in the description, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks.